So Prusa Slicer 2.4 just came out, and I uh, thought what I'd do is show you, um, first off, where I got it from. Oops, I don't want to do that one. Uh, Prusa Slicer, right there. So normally you're, you're going to download Prusa Slicer from their website, but we don't really want to do that. We actually want to download it from their GitHub page instead. Um, so we're going to go to the Prusa Slicer uh, GitHub and go uh, navigate down into Prusa Slicer slash releases and you'll see the latest version here. And you can see that there's quite a number of features in here. They have a very detailed write-up of all the changes that they've made. Um, but if you scroll all the way down to the bottom here you'll see here's the uh, the release logs for this particular one and uh, you're just going to download the appropriate version for your machine, unpack it, unzip it or whatever it is you call it for your particular machine and uh, run it. So I have 2.4 installed here um, and what I'm going to do is uh, show you some of the cool features that you can use with the 3D Chameleon. So uh, the first feature that I'm going to show you is um, one that Ritrap actually suggested uh, for the uh, Prusa Slicer team to do and that is the automatic um, detection of signs. So if I just simply load a file here, um, here's a, uh, let me go ahead and scale this a little bit so it'll fit. And I'm gonna go ahead and move the, uh, the purge block out of the way here. We'll just rotate that 90 degrees. Again, uh, for the 3D Chameleon, I always recommend that you put the purge block between the point where the color changes occur and the part so that's going to be back here um, now here's the cool thing I just loaded that object I you'll notice that um, I've got the default settings for the color uh, if I hit slice watch what happens so we're, we're expecting to see just a normal slice occur here but we get this uh, notice here Sliced object looks like a sign. Apply auto color changes to print. So when I click that link, you'll notice that it automatically inserted two color changes for me and has automatically selected the second and third. Now if I wanted to, I could go back and uh, change those. Uh, well, let's go back to slice again. We have the transitions here. I can actually go through here. Notice it says change to extruder 2 um, and then same thing here as I hover this is a change to extruder 3 so we have extruder 1 is the base extruder 2 and then extruder 3 uh, in this case the red is extruder 2 so you can see those color changes uh, in the part pretty cool that is a really cool way of doing that um, so let's go back to the uh, default mode and uh, instead of doing that Let's go ahead and show you one of the other features that they've added here, and that's this palette here. Uh, so we have this palette which allows us to select um, the colors that we want to add to it. So I'm going to go ahead and, and uh, switch my colors up. You'll notice that I have uh, the base part um, white as the uh, number three extruder. So let me go back to here. Actually, let's uh, right mouse click on this. Let's change the entire thing to extruder 3 so that it's white. There we go. So there we have the, the white color, lighter color. It's, it's actually a, a green. Uh, by the way, to change these, you can change them just by clicking on them. So now I have the, the white part. Um, so let's go ahead and uh, apply some color to this um, using the palette tool. There we go. There's the palette tool. So let's go ahead and uh, pick um, the black color and the red color. And we'll go ahead and apply those to different areas. So I can do a smart fill. And you'll notice that as I hover over the features, it highlights their shapes. So I'm going to change this to red by using the right mouse button. And I'm going to change this to black by using the left mouse button. So you can see as I hover over these, right and left mouse click, I can simply select the colors. So very cool. I can 
do that for all of those. Now I'm only doing the tops. I'm not actually doing the sides. You can actually zoom in if you want to and do the sides, but uh, I want to show you a feature that it does while you're doing this. So let me go ahead and uh, get all the rest of this text here. Control Z, undo. So there we go, nice cool signage. Um, now let me go ahead and slice this and show you what it does. Interestingly enough, the black on the edges here are not exactly filled up. And you see that on the top layer they are, but as we go down into it, you can see that the part actually has a triangular shape going down inside of it. Very cool. So you, you get a good edge transition, but you also don't just have the the one layer. So as you go down, you can see it goes down one layer or one width um, closer each time as it drills down into the part. Now that has a tendency to use a little bit more filament, but that's actually okay. That makes for a really strong joint between those colors. So um, these are perfect for the 3D Chameleon. Uh, this is a fantastic way of creating uh, multicolor prints uh, right from Prusa Slicer without having to worry about using any third-party tools to edit the uh, STL to make it a multicolor object. You just simply select the faces and apply it. Now I do want to show you one other feature here that I think is pretty cool. Uh, and that's that in the multi-material painting mechanism we've actually got a couple different ways of doing it. We have what's called bucket fill and the th cool thing about bucket fill is it will actually uh, find adjacent faces that match the uh, other face. Um, so uh, let's see if I can find a good example here. If I zoom in, well, actually, if I, I, I accidentally just right mouse click on that, which changed the background to red, but you see it also changed the sides of the letters. Notice that previously when we did that, it didn't change the size of the letters. Um, that's a very interesting feature in that it's finding uh, parts that are associated with but not exactly aligned with the, the current object that you have selected. So if I undo this, you'll notice that when I do the bucket fill, there's a, a clipping of view option. And I can actually see as I move this around, notice that it's sliced, it's cut it to um, a angle here, which is interesting feature. If I slip, uh, switch to Smart Fill, I get an angle that I can actually fill based off of an angle. Again, you'll notice that as I select this, it's select all these others because I have it set at 30 degrees. But if I set it at 0 degrees, now it's only selecting the facets themselves. Okay. If I set it at a few degrees, it'll find all of them that are close to that. See, these two are, are within 4 degrees of each other but this one next to it is not. So that angle is a little bit too great for that. So you can adjust that angle to find the elements uh, that just match uh, the angle that you're actually working with, which is a pretty cool idea. If I go all the way through here, that selects everything. It doesn't make sense to do that. But there you can see, now I'm selecting a majority of the sides of this zero, right? So if I right mouse click on it, um, let's undo that rotate this around. You can see it selected all the way around that. Very cool feature there. Uh, and then the brush is literally just the brush, so I can I can actually create a, a sphere or a circle, right, um, or select a pointer, and it's, that's actually going to give us the, uh, the triangles from the tessellation there, right, so I can paint those uh, the same way, right. Let's undo that. Your circle is going to give you a basically a paintbrush and 
Also, you'll notice that if I do split triangles, as I do that, I can actually fill in an area, and it's going to select all the triangles in that area. Right? Same thing with sphere. If I do split triangles, it's actually creating new triangles only where the surface of the sphere intersects your model. So, pretty cool. Great job, Prusa team. Love it.